One of the great things about the steam era was the fact that each railroad had its own. There was very little standardization. It was very difficult for one engine, custom built for one railroad, to be entirely satisfactory on another railroad. But getting the, the people who had to use it on the other railroad uh, to accept it uh, would be something else. The Chesapeake and Ohio Railway was one company insisted on having its own way when it came to locomotive design. The C&O stretched from Chesapeake Bay in Virginia to the Ohio Valley and beyond. It was known as George Washington's Railroad because America's founding father also helped found a network of roads and canals which the C&O Railroad eventually replaced. In the Appalachian Mountains, the coal industry provided thousands of families with jobs. Transporting coal was the major revenue item on the Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad. Efficiently moving it from the mines to the market was a priority. The CNO had an adequate roster of locomotives in coal train service. But in 1940, they wanted bigger and better. Lima Locomotive Works was willing to build one based on an unconventional design first developed in 1928. Lima proposed a 212-6 locomotive. Its designer, Will Woodard, projected this as an improvement or an expansion of locomotives of the 210-4 wheel arrangement then in use. The design failed, but it served as the inspiration for a mammoth articulated locomotive. That locomotive was the 2666 Allegheny type. It stood over 16 and a half feet tall. It was over 125 and a half feet long. It weighed 778,000 pounds and recorded the highest horsepower rating of any piston-driven steam locomotive, nearly 7,500 horsepower. There was a committee of engineers that were put together uh, by the Chesapeake and Ohio and other associated railroads. And this committee knew that steam was dying. There'd be one last chance to set a world's record in terms of power. This committee set out that what they were going to accomplish was design the most horsepowerful locomotive they could to uh, beat anything in sight in terms of horsepower and speed, and they succeeded. The Allegheny was a powerful and beautiful locomotive, but it created as much controversy as it did smoke. It stands today as one of the ultimate steam locomotives ever built, but for the railroad to put it to work uh, hauling coal up over its mount at 18 miles an hour was a tremendous waste of performance. The locomotive capabilities were not being used in that service. So the CNO, uh, in my opinion, never really had a job that that locomotive could do. To make matters worse, it was discovered that Lima had misrepresented the weight of the first Alleghenies. Train crews were paid by the locomotive's weight on its driving wheels. Alleghenies were found to be thousands of pounds heavier than first claimed. Engineers and firemen saw the miscalculation as an attack on their livelihood. In 1944, the CNO sued Lima. The railroad had been forced to pay thousands of dollars in crew back pay. Lima reportedly paid out more than $3 million in losing the suit, not to mention their lost pride the company's largest locomotive had become a bust. Locomotives like the Alleghenies muscled coal trains through the mountains of the east. In the western states, another breed of steam giant was powering through the mountains and canyons of Wyoming and Utah. The Omaha-based Union Pacific Railroad built the eastern half of the Transcontinental Railroad and is the only major American line that has never changed its name. The Union Pacific has always loved big engines and in 1936 bought 40 4664 Challenger type locomotives from Alco. Simple articulated locomotives like Challengers used steam directly from the boiler to operate all four cylinders. They were costlier, but the locomotives were much faster than the Malay compound engines. During World War II, the Union Pacific asked Alco to expand the engine's design by adding two additional pairs of driving wheels. Alco obliged. The locomotives were built in the company's premier Schenectady Works in New York. 
One day, an Alco worker wrote Big Boy on the smoke box of one of the engines. The name stuck. The UP took delivery of 25 4884 Big Boys from 1941 to 1944 and officially referred to them as the 4000 class. It was the only railroad to operate the monsters. And the engines were getting up to the absolute limit in dimensions and in weight, particularly. On the Union Pacific, in order to run the big boys, they actually had to straighten out some curves. They had to, to uh, remove some restrictions and bridges and tunnels. They actually had to separate a uh, double track that was adjacent so the engines wouldn't, be, wouldn't hit each other on curves. Big boys rightfully deserved their name. They stood over 16 feet tall. They were 132 feet long and weighed 772,000 pounds. They reportedly could pull a train five miles long on flat terrain. Big boys were the biggest things on Western rails and they could intimidate anyone, especially a kid on his first railroad job. I was right out of high school at the time. and This was about the, the largest, most huge piece of equipment I'd ever seen in a huge firebox, 20-some-odd uh, feet, uh, feet long. And, of course, uh, my duties were principally in, in front of that firebox. And uh, I recall one time that uh, I was checking my firebox like that when the engineer decided to increase the power. And uh, the draft sucked the steam, the shovel right out of my hand. And uh, I didn't have a shovel to use the rest of that trip. It was in the firebox and, of course, immediately melted with all of the heat that was in there. It was. Uh, Quite an experience for a youngster. The big boy was my love of the, of the steam locomotives. It was just kind of like uh, music. You hear that exhaust coming from the stack. We used to say uh, that uh, 4,000, when you're going uphill with it, you say, come along, come along, come along, come along and you felt like you had muscle under you when you were on that, on that fourth hour. Unlike Alleghenies, which were frequently used in slow speed coal service, big boys whisked high speed freight over tough grades. This allowed them to reach their peak horsepower more often in the 40 mile an hour range. The thing about the big boy was that it was designed for high-speed, heavy freight service, and that's the way it was used. We had a locomotive that we said could pull 100 cars up the Wasatch, and it did repeatedly every day in overall terms, in, in terms of its physical size, its weight, its appearance, and its performance. Uh, nobody beat it. The Big Boys and Alleghenies have both been called the largest steam locomotives ever built, and both have legions of fans. Part of the lure of the big boy is the fact that it had 16 driving wheels and all these uh, leading and trailing wheels, and that the whole package was put together in such an attractive manner. It was good and it looked good. There are people that say the big boy was better than the Allegheny, but they never ran in comparable service and never competed against each other, so this is another thing that we'll never know. But it is an interesting issue to contemplate. By the 1950s, clean and economical diesels were replacing steam locomotives on the rails. Despite the landmark refinements of Anatole Mallet and Will Woodard, the days of the giants were growing short. But one railroad refused to put the fires out in the bellies of its steam locomotives. It was on this line that the giants made their last great stand. 